G'day chemists. This is a video on organic chemistry nomenclature or naming them. How do we name organic chemicals? So this will actually take in the majority of organic chemistry. Um, the one thing that you'll need extra is you'll need to be able to identify the different functional groups, but you should also have that. We'll mention that in here as well. So this should be our starting point. Uh, we're not going to talk too much about this lovely molecule right here, caffeine. Um, now, caffeine as a chemist, as a name, doesn't tell me much. But if I understood that this was, um, oh, cheat sheet just ending, 137 uh, trimethyl purine uh, 2,6-dione, I could actually build this molecule. Like, I could, I could know what this molecule is at. That's the actual name. So caffeine is the common name. The IUPAC proper name is 137 trimethylpurine 26 dione Now, knowing that name, caffeine tells me nothing except that I'm going to enjoy it, but knowing that name tells me a lot about the chemical uh, and, and what it's constructed with, where, how it fits, how it will react with other things. There's a lot in there. All right, awesome. So let's look at how we name things. Um, our learning goal is by the end of this to be able to name some simple organic compounds from their structural formula, particularly if we can identify the functional groups. There might be an extra step for you. You might have to learn the functional groups as well, but we'll have those in here to help you out. Uh, so this is your vocabulary. There's a fair bit here. If I can get you to write, pause the video, write this down so you've got it to refer back to as we move forward through the lesson. So let's have a look at the components of an organic molecule. First off is, well, we'll have a look at our little organic compound down the bottom here. Um, this is ethanoic acid. So we have our R groups, right? Now our R groups are the hydrocarbon backbone. And we can see it here, it would be, it's actually just this one carbon on its own, but in other instances it would include this carbon. But it's the long carbon part of the chain, okay? Um, and each, each carbon in that molecule, in that sort of, that R group, is only bonded usually to hydrogens. There are other stuff in there, like it can be, it can have sort of side chains and other groups coming off it, but generally it's the long chain which is, which is carbons bonded to hydrogens. Uh, the functional groups, this is attached to the R group, and the functional group is what tells us how it reacts. It's the defining characteristic of that molecule. Uh, some molecules have multiple functional groups, and for that we actually have this list of hierarchy. It starts at the top, um, so, you know, if something can be an alkane, alkene, alkyne, okay? And if that's all it is, that gets naming preference. If something has an OH attached to it, a hydroxyl group, we call it an alkanol. And even if it's got a double bond in there, the alkanol is the functional group. But then if we see a haloalkane, in other words, it has an, a halogen attached to it, like a chlorine, a bromine, so forth, group seven element, that takes naming precedence over an alcohol. So if it has both an alcohol and a halogen, we name it based on the halogen and all the way down to carboxylic acid. Now, the carboxylic acids, which ethanoic acid is one, that's our, for the point of our course, the scope of our course anyway, the primary, um, the, the highest precedence of naming. So it, it gets that, that last little bit at the end, that last little part of the name, which we'll talk about in a minute called the suffix. So let's have a look at them. Here we have an example called propenol. Um, it's got a three carbon chain, uh, or sorry, propenal. Um, you'll need to, before we go any further, write down this table and draw this. Then we come back here. All right. So the prefix, which is the beginning part of the name, that tells us the length of the main carbon chain. When we're back to caffeine, it was a purine. Purine is a particular type of aromatic um, cyclo-heterocyclohexical compound. Um, so we're generally we're talking about straight chains for us. Okay, so the prefix denotes the length of the carbon chain. Here the C the carbon chain is three, one, two, three, prop, prop, number three. The options are up to the first ten, meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex, hept. Oct non dec. So those are our ones. Um, so prop, propanel or propenal. I, I really think when you say this, you need to exaggerate the infix because we're in a course where we're looking at single and triple and double bonds as well. And that becomes important. And propanel and propanel sound the same, particularly if you have that really flat Australian accent. Um, the infix, 
that's the bit in the middle, denotes um, how much double or triple bonding there is. Okay, so in this case, there's a double bond. So we have ene. So it's propenal. And then our suffix denotes the functional group. And here we have a C on the end with an oxygen coming off it. And if we look down here, uh, da -da 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 -da, aldehydes. Okay, a carbon on the end with an oxygen coming off, double bonded, with also a hydrogen, is an aldehyde. And they have the suffix al. This would actually be written as prop 2 en one al And what that tells us is it tells us where all those different parts are. For example, we know that the, well, being an aldehyde, it, it is on the end, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we know that the oxygen is on the last um, carbon, or the first carbon, we numbered it one, two, three, in that order. And that means the double bond occurs at the start of the second carbon. So that's how we, we name these things, so that we can actually build these molecules from scratch if we know the names, or we can entirely predict its reactability, how it's going to act. Now, there are some very specific rules, so let's actually go through how we applied that name. The example we have here, sorry, some of the animations coming have appeared early. Um, the example we have here is this lovely six carbon, one, two, three, four, five carbon uh, masterpiece. You'll note that each carbon has four bonds, except one, which I've left off. This should have an H here. This is going to happen in this one. Um, so this has an H there. Now it's got all the bonds. Um, so the first step is we identify the longest parent chain by following the rules in order of precedence. There's a bit here. Um, we find the parental functional group. Here we have an OH. That's the most important functional group we can see. Okay, uh, Maximum number of multiple bonds. There's no multiple bonds. And contains the maximum number of carbons. The first part is functional group, then number of multiple bonds, then carbons. And we can see that we actually have a choice to make here on what the chain is. 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 4. It could go either way. Just for simplicity, we're going to go along the baseline here, one, two, three, four. That gives us the prefix, which in this case is but. So it's butan something. Then we identify the highest order functional group, which we've just talked about. Here it will be an alcohol because we have a hydroxyl group. So um, that's going to be an alcohol. So our suffix will be ol. Um, so, so far we can call it butanol-ish, but we've not finished all our rules. Uh, we number the parent chain. And we number it so that the functional group has the lowest possible number. So it's either left to right, right to left. In this case, we go one, two, three, four to give our functional group the number one. Um, we identify any triple or double bonds. There's none. That gives us the infix. In this case, it's going to be an an, A-N, uh, because there are no double bonds. Uh, so single bonds here equals an N. Then... Our side chains are identified, and we give these the prefix yl, il. Okay, here we have one side chain, and it is one carbon long. We don't include this. Okay, so it's meth il, so methyl. There we see that. Then we add our prefixes, di, tri, tetra, um, to identify to the identifier of any component identified. That means if we had two alcohols, this would be a diol. If we had two methyl groups, it would be a dimethyl. At the moment, we don't, so it's actually trickier because we don't include any modifiers in the front. So it's just a methyl ol. So we now place the, so we've got all the components there, right? We now place the positional numbers. This is important. We've got a bit of grammar here. Positional numbers, and this is our last rule. Positional numbers, uh, where the numbers are separated by commas and the letters and numbers are separated by hyphens. Mm -hmm. But it is one word. And that gives us a three dash methyl. Okay, so that's what that part's going to look. Butan, and there's a one ol. And now we can put all that together. Three methyl butan one ol. Now that's one word. Okay, um, there's a bit in that. Go back through it if you need to. I hope it made sense. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and we'll get back to you as quick as we can. Uh, thanks for watching, and yeah, we'll catch you next time. Bye now.